Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video and in this one we're going to be doing something really quite special. Today I'm going to be taking you guys through the process of building the most secure piston door I can possibly create. Now we're going to use a whole ton of combination locks right here, we're going to chain them all together and we're going to create a ridiculous number of possible combinations. I have no clue how ridiculous that number is going to be, but I want to get to the point where we can't actually say the number anymore. It, it just needs to be that big, okay? So we're going to get completely ridiculous right here, and we're going to go through all sorts of different designs. We're going to have lever combination locks, color combination locks, we're going to have item frame, dropper, just all the crazy weird kinds of combination locks that I can possibly think of. And I would say the first design that we should come up with right here is the simplest. We're going to start things off with the old faithful and that is the lever combination lock. Now for those of you who haven't built one of these before, it's incredibly simple. All you have to do is create some form of AND gate out the back of this thing and that's essentially it. Now as far as the combination is concerned, I would say something like that. That should be fairly memorable because then it is literally almost like a W. So you go up and down like that and that should turn off all of the redstone torches which means that this combination lock is now done. <laughs> now I have to say, okay, not the entire build is going to be that simple. All right, that was the simplest beginning. This is like the simplest combination lock you could possibly build in Minecraft. But there we go, that's everything. So we connect up all the redstone right here, that should connect to all of those. Then we connect up all of this redstone right here. And then all we have to do is connect up this redstone to this redstone and give ourselves a redstone output. And that's it. So right now we have the correct combination, which means that this redstone is activated. But if we get the wrong combination, for example, we flick this one, then the redstone is off. If we flick this one, for example, then the redstone is off. You guys get the idea. Okay, so this one, <laughs> this one is already fully functional. So how about we move on to building something just a tiny bit more complex, and that is the color combination lock. Now I remember way back in the early days of my YouTube channel, I used to build pretty much 100% color combination locks. That was literally all I used to do. Uh, every week I would come out with a new design for color combination locks and eventually people got a little bit bored of them. <laughs> so I haven't done one for a while, but hopefully I still remember how to do them. Okay, so, so far I have got all of the pistons laid out. That's our piston feed tape done. And then I have got the starter monostable circuit. So I guess the first thing that I can do is I guess power all of those pistons right there so they'll be on a one tick delay which means that these ones over here need to be on a three tick delay. Now if I was to do that yeah we should be totally fine because that should still be being powered by this redstone right here which means that this little pulse going through this piston shouldn't cause an issue so then we can run the repeaters down into there. We've got two ticks on that one which actually can be there Two ticks extra, excellent. Okay, so all of those pistons down at the bottom should now be fully synced up. So now we just have to do the ones at the top. Now I would say that it would be a good idea to do like a, a zigzagging half slab tower going up like this. Let's just quickly grab ourselves some half slabs. We can replace the button right there and we'll just go up like this. And this should connect in to our top layers of pistons. Now these ones here need to be on a two tick delay, I think. So yeah, two ticks on these ones, and then redstone going across the top there, fantastic. And these ones need to be on, well, one tick of delay from that piston right there. So that should go up like this, and up into those ones, and there we go. We should have ourselves a fully finished piston feed tape mechanism. <laughs> that was really, really easy as well. Awesome, okay, I'm going to fill in all of the blocks, and then I'll try my best to explain to you how this actually works as a combination lock. Now because I actually ended up placing 20 blocks on the inside of this piston feed tape, we've had to use concrete and then a handful of wall blocks at the end right here. But that works for me. I mean we now have 20 possible combinations in this lock alone. So obviously if we multiply them together, say we had 4, 4 of these, then that would be 20 times 20 times 20 times 20, which would probably be about 160,000. Hang on, 20 to the power of 4. 160,000! <laughs> that was some really fast quick fire maths then! Huh! 
I'm quite surprised with myself right there, but yeah. So what we've got is we have got 160,000 possible combinations in these four color combination locks once we add all of them in, but this one module has got 20 possible combinations and the way that we detect what number is correct is we place one solid block inside this memory reel right here that is then being powered by say a redstone torch or a lever. So let's just quickly chuck that one through. And that means that we can take a redstone output from this block when this block right here is in the correct position. So right now, orange is right there, and that is the correct one, okay? So that's the correct one right there. If we hit this button and obviously it cycles round, then we don't have a redstone output, which means that this one right here, the magenta, isn't the correct color in the combination lock. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Right, so I am going to build three more of these things and that should give us a decent number of possible combinations. All four of these things have been constructed and they're all running out into these redstone torches which run out into this redstone line right here. Now this essentially creates another AND gate which basically says, are all of these correct? Okay, are each and every one of these combination lots correct? If they are, then I'll give myself a redstone output out the back of this torch. So that's essentially how that one works. And I just thought I'd give you an update on the possible number of combinations we're currently sat at 163,840,000, which is yeah, that's pretty good so far. <laughs> Next up on the to-do list is the item frame combination lock. So we need to make it so that our player has to get all of these item frames in the correct position to be able to move on to the next set of possible combinations. Now, I have not built one of these things in absolutely ages. Like, it has been forever. So hopefully I can just about remember how to do it. So from what I remember, it should be something that looks a little bit like this. So we have we have a repeater running out there block. And then would it be a redstone a redstone torch? I don't know. So, okay, here's here's my logic behind what I've just done right there. So the theory is is that this this is what controls how much signal strength is given out by the comparator. So right now, we have an item on the inside of this item frame. Oh, I've built it one block too far across, so we'll have to fix that up. But if we place the redstone torch on the inside there, right, so this redstone is activated, but it doesn't quite run into this block, which means that that is off, which means that the output is on. So that, that should be, that's correct. Right there, that is correct. And then if we do that, then the output is off, this is, this might actually work. Hang on, so if we place, if we put like an item on the inside of this furnace, that will increase the signal strength of that one, which means that in default position, we don't get an output because this redstone torch is powering this redstone. But then in this position, we do get an output. Then in this position, we don't, we don't get an output, I've done it. Wow, that must have been in like a really, really deep part of my brain and I've just somehow managed to work out how to do it. Literally just then. Right, we have got how many more to build? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more of those things to build and then we will have a huge number of possible combinations for that one. So to update you guys, all I've done is I've added in a few OR gates out of the back right here, which essentially say if this one or this one is on, then the output will be on, which is a good way to work out whether or not you have the correct combination. And then I'm basically going to create a really large OR gate going all the way out the back right here, which says if this one or this one or this one or this one is on, then the output will be on, which means that all of our inputs or these have to be off for our output to be off, which means that we can then decide if all of the combinations are correct. So once again, let's do a bit of an update to our ma mathematics. So I'm just quickly going to go into the calculator. So this will be, there's eight possible positions for our thing and there are eight of those, which means that possible number of combinations is 2.748 times by 10 to the power of 15. So that is two with 15 zeros after it. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty good. We're doing pretty well so far, right. Let's add in a few extra modules. What what should come next? Maybe buttons. I think buttons could be quite a cool way to go. Now I'm going to be honest guys, I have never made a button combination lock before. I've never designed one myself. 
which means that I could struggle with this one. I know it uses RS Norlatch arrays. That's about as far as it goes for me. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll have to wait and see how this one pans out, I guess. So currently this, this is my theory, and I haven't tested this out, and I haven't watched any tutorials right here. We've got a chain of RS null latches, and this first RS null latch is locking this RS null latch, which is locking this one, which is locking this one. Okay, so if we were to hit this button, yeah, nothing, nothing would happen to those, and if we were to hit this button, nothing would happen to those. So this is fully locked in, okay? But then if we correct get the correct one on this one right here, then obviously that will send the item up into this area right here, which will unlock this RS null latch, which means that we can get the next one correct, which means that we can get the next one correct, and then the next one correct, and then there we go. We have got ourselves an output, but then we have a full reset line if we get things wrong, which couldn't do it in that order. <laughs> it would have to be in this order right here. But you guys get the idea. Now, I have no idea where to go from this point. Ah, Things are getting more confusing. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I do not know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've connected in the buttons. I've tried my best to create some form of reset circuit. I might actually have to watch a bit of a tutorial for this one just to get a rough idea of what's going on. It's been ages since I've had to do that. Okay, I think I've come up with something that sort of works here. So if we were to hit this one, then that will activate that one, which means we've now moved on to the next section right here, which is good. But if we were to hit this one, then that would trigger the reset line, which would then send a pulse, why? Send a pulse through this. Which that should actually be quite a fast pulse. Hold up a second. Oh my word, this is this is so confusing. Um so that should be that. Boy why did I decide to do this? <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, before someone says it down in the comment section, yes, I'm well aware that there are much smaller designs than this, but I want to do it myself. Simple as that. This is my first ever attempt, and it is enormous. I I'm well aware of that. <laughs> I've created a working circuit. So, if we place these in order, as you can see, this one activates, then that one activates, and then that one activates, and then this one activates, meaning the whole system is now up and running. All of these comparators right here are switched off, which means that we have got the correct combination. But, if we were to get any of these things wrong, so let's quickly just do a reset right here. If we were to get any of these in the wrong order, so say for example we trigger this one first, you can see that that will send a reset signal through the signal line if we were to get the first one correct and then the second one correct, but then we were to miss one and get this, then as you can see, everything resets. It works, it works. We made ourselves a functioning system, but we now need to hook up the AND gate and I really can't work out how to do it because we need to take a redstone output from these... Yeah! From these... Com mm. <laughs> I don't know if I've given myself enough space. It is all done and it is by far the biggest button combination lock that has ever existed but I am chuffed to bits with it because it's my first ever one. So we hit this button and that should trigger the first one. Good, good, good. And then if we hit this button right here, that should trigger number two. We hit this button right here, that should trigger number three. And we hit this button right here, and we got ourselves a redstone output. So that was me getting the correct combination. But if we get the wrong combination, so I've just reset the circuit right there. And that should have reset everything. Hang on. Redstone input there. Oh, okay, there's no redstone up there. Right, let's try that again. So we hit this button right here, and that should reset everything. Yes, okay, that redstone output is turned off. So if we get the wrong order, so we hit this button right here, then obviously number one will turn off. But then say you we skip this button and go straight to number three. 
We got a reset. Good stuff. Right, now let's see if we just hit a random button. So we hit that button right there once again. We've got our first button correct, but then we hit this button over here. <laughs> yes! It resets! We have a fully functional... <laughs> we have a fully functional button. <laughs> A button combination lock that is enormous. It is monstrous. It's a horrible circuit. Oh, but I couldn't be happier. Could not be happier. Right, let's move on from that because we want to do a little bit of item combinations right now. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100% certain on the maths for this one right here, so you can let me know down in the comment section if I'm wrong. But I said that there's a 1 in 10 chance for the first button press, because it could be any of the buttons. Then there's a 1 in 9 chance for the next one, because you can't have the same button twice. And then 1 in 8 and 1 in 7, which means it's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. And then I've multiplied that by all of the other combinations that we have right here, which gives us 1.385 times by 10 to the power of 19. Which is a pretty no monstrous number. I mean, that is that is a really, really big number. But things are going to start to get really ridiculous now because we are going to start using items. And items have a huge number of possible combinations that they can be because, of course, you can rename items. Which, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely adds gazillions. Just, just a stupid number. And we are going to have four of these little things at the end right here all hooked into RS and all latches to create what is essentially going to be an item combination lock. Sounds pretty good. Now for this one, it's actually going to be just ridiculously simple. What I thought we could do is we're going to add in a bunch of these little item filters right here. And then up at the top, we've got a button that you have to press and that powers all of this redstone, which sends all of the items into these hoppers all at once. Then we're going to have an AND gate out the back right here, which will obviously activate if all of the items are correct, which will then go into an RS nor latch which will reset, causing us to have our redstone output if we get the correct combination. I mean, that is... This one is probably the simplest circuit we have done, bar the lever combination lock, and it has by far the most combinations. So I guess, you know, sometimes it's not the complicated things, like this, that actually work, because that probably has the least number of combinations out of this entire circuit. So right now, all of our item hoppers are rigged up to receive an iron block. And inside each one of our droppers, we have got one iron block. And that should mean that when we hit this button, that redstone turns off very briefly, which will activate our RS and latch, giving us a redstone output. And then we have this button over here to do the reset circuit. That is awesome. Absolutely perfect and is working wonderfully. Now, in terms of the maths, this is where things begin to get a little bit shaky because I did some Googling and I was looking up how many items there were in Minecraft and it seems like people don't know. The last post was in 2013 uh, and there were 296 different items that will stack. So with that maths, we did 296 to the power of 4 multiplied by all of the other bits and pieces that we have in here and right now we have 1.063 times by 10 to the power of 29 so that's one with 30 zeros or 29 zeros after it which is obviously an insane insane number now i would say it's more likely that we probably have about 400 maybe even 450 items in minecraft now that will stack i mean we have all the different colors of concrete of all this stuff we've got purple now all that you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll say that it's 410 to the power of 4. Then that will give us 3.9 times by 10 to the power of 29, which is obviously a really large number. But where things begin to get a little bit silly is where you take into account how many different names you can give to the items. I'm quickly going to do some maths. So from what I can work out, so I've put 410 times by 90 to the power of 30. Now that is because there are 90 different characters that you can use on the inside of an anvil and there are 30 different character slots. And then all of that has been multiplied to the power of four, which I imagine is going to be quite a large number. Yep, oh my word, that's huge. 1.264174 times by 10 to the power of 264, which is, yeah, that's enormous. <laughs> Really, really big. Um, 
I can't even put that number into context, really. I seriously can't. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, that's a, an enormous, enormous number. That's a one with 264 zeros after it. So I'm going to hook up all of these different combination locks that we have right here. I'm going to hook all of these in together and we are going to run them into some form of door. Now I must admit, I am a little bit worried about this test right here because there are plenty of things that could potentially go wrong. But anyway, we have got the lever combination lock. That is combination number one. Then we have got the color combination lock, which that one should be correct. This one should now be correct. This one should now be correct. And this one should now be correct. If we take a look out the back, yes, everything is looking good. Fantastic. Now these ones, they all need to be in this position right there, which means that this one here should be looking a little bit like that. Awesome. This is working. Right, okay, moving on. We've got that one. And then this one right here. And then this one right here. And then this one right here. Good. Okay, that's given us a redstone output. Fantastic. Then for the final combination lock, which is the item combination lock. I've had to place in slabs on the top because they were getting bud powered. We should hit this button right here. What? <laughs> Why does that not work? Are you serious? You know what, I, I'm going to do something slightly different. Right, let's quickly just... Uh, <laughs> because what's happening is, is that for some reason, none of those droppers want to fire because they're being powered from above. So if we do something a little bit like this, then that should trigger the system, which has opened our door. Way <laughs> fantastic. We have got ourselves a working system right there. Unfortunately, for some reason, just the redstone wasn't working for that. I'm guessing... It probably has something to do with the bud powering of this. What? It worked that time? Oh, for goodness sake. I give up with droppers. I mean, seriously. Look, they seem to just be so strange with the way that they operate. It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, our combination lock is, in fact, working as you just saw right there. This thing is functioning like a champion. We have got gazillions upon trillions upon brilliance of combinations which is exactly what i wanted to do at the start of today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to hit that like button and if you really loved it then make sure to subscribe but thanks for watching guys this has been mumbo and i'm out i'll see you later <laughs>